I'm going to call the Jefferson County Election Commission in order today. And, Betty, will you read the meeting? Our last meeting, please. The Jefferson County Election Commission met on March 18, 2020, at 10 a.m. in the election office. All commissioners were present, with the exception of Commissioner Etherton. The meeting was called to order by Chairman Phyllis McCracken. The minutes of March 9, 2020 were read and approved. The motion to approve the minutes was made by Commissioner Kramer and seconded by Commissioner Carr. All commissioners present voted in the affirmative. The commissioners certified the election for the March 3, 2020 presidential preference county primary. All commissioners present signed off on the certification. The motion to certify the election was made by Commissioner Carr and second by Commissioner Kramer. All commissioners present voted in the affirmative. General discussion centered on the election turnout, the coronavirus, and the June seminar. All were saddened by the death of Commissioner Carolyn Etherton. With no further business, the motion to adjourn at 11.07 a.m. was made by Commissioner Carr and second by Commissioner Kramer. All commissioners present voted in the affirmative. Respectfully submitted, Betty Watkins, Secretary. Okay. Do we need to have any corrections to these minutes? If not, so. we're, going, we're going to vote to approve the minutes. Betty, will you do the roll call? Commissioner Carr. Yes. Kramer. Yes. McCracken. Yes. Betty Watkins. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, now we're going to <coughs> certify the, uh, the uh, candidate, the ballot for the candidate for the August 6th. Excuse me. Election. Excuse me, Phyllis. We need to back up. We need to. Uh, we need a motion and a second. Excuse me. Oh, okay. To, I'm sorry. On minute. Okay. Did I hear this a motion Jack, that we approve the minutes? Jack Kramer makes such a motion. Clay Carr makes a second. Thank you. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay. This is all you. Okay. Now we're going to certify the ballot can the certified ballot candidates for the August election, 2020. Yeah, now, guys, everybody obviously has a pack. Uh, if you have your list of qualified candidates, uh, and and as you, if you'll notice on that list that I gave you, you know, they had, on the starting with the constable, constable one, you'll see the first one was John Armour, and Warren Daniels was listed at the end as also District 1. So information... In the constable races, don't forget, we do have two constables that in District 1 because it's the county seat. So that's why we have 11 constables instead of 10 because District 1 has the two. All of these constables that have picked up and turned in are currently serving as constables. So, And there's no opposition against any of them in either one of those because Constable District 1 is a vote for two office. Okay. All those districts. Now, county in County Commissioner District Three, which is a second set of names, you've got Wayne Johnson, Jim Snodgrass, and Tom Carter. Now we had some others pick up in the district, but they not turn in. So those are our three. So obviously that's a contested race. Uh, that's a vote for one office. And that office is not normally on this ballot because the county commissioners run in 2022, but this is for the vacancy from where uh, Randy Baxley vacated the office. So this will be on the ballot as a um, as running for an expired term. We'll be out by that. So they're only in office for two years before they'll be on the ballot again. So the third group of names, which is the Democratic State Executive Committee woman. And I spelled committee woman wrong. I see it needs to have an eye in it. 
and uh, state uh, Democratic State Executive Committee men are also not normally on this ballot. But since those two offices were vacated in that committee on the Democratic State Executive Committee side, we had Ms. Fuentes and Rodney Fugate pick up and turn in. Now, Rodney is from Tazewell, as you can see, and so he filed his certified duplicate copy with us. Rachel Fuentes is actually from Newmarket, so she has picked up here, filed her original with us, and then all of the uh, certified duplicate copies have been filed in the other counties that make up that eight Senate district. Okay. The last one on that list is John Turner. And, and John is the commissioner for District 4. Okay. He picked up and turned in, so he's qualified in his signatures and they've been verified. Now, in this election cycle, we run the second and fourth school board district and the second and fourth road commission district. In the second district, which is a vote to office, no one turned their petition in to run. If the yeah. election, I'm sorry. Uh, does that would that be District Four? Because District Two no. has been turned no. in. No, District. Uh, I'm talking. I'm talking about Road Commissioner. Oh, okay. I thought you School Board. I'm sorry. No, Road Commissioner is two and four, and School Board is two and four. But in the okay. Road Commission, John Turner turns to the fourth. It's a vote for one office. That's the White Pine District. And then in the second district, one of the incumbents didn't want to run again. One of the incumbents picked up and then called me and said, listen, I'm not going to be able to turn this in because I'm self-quarantined. And so I had no one turn in for the vote for two offices. So if that, if the election goes and nobody files a certificate of write-in candidacy and wins by write-in, those two offices or those two spots would move on and be on our November ballot, okay? But they, but, but, a, but a person who wants to qualify as a writing candidate has until noon, June the 17th to come back with me if they want to be considered on the ballot. And we don't know what will happen there, okay? Moving on to the school board, we have the same issue there. We have the Second and fourth in school board, that second and fourth district that is normally on this ballot, we had one, two, three, four, five people pick up for district two. Now that's a vote for two office. Okay? So you got Denise Fair, Danny Martin, Rebecca Morgan Mace, Maurice Moose Solomon, and David Walters all picked up and turned in. But nobody turned in for district four in the school board. So the same thing applies to it. If District 4 is, ends up not, no one files a write-in certificate and no one's elected in this election, then it will also move on to be an office by itself in the November election, too, just like the uh, Road Commission would. But it would be a vote for one for District 4. But someone could, and I understand there may be someone that comes in that's going to pick up a write-in certificate, but won't know that until they do it. So that's where we are on those. Then we've got Jeremy Faison in District 11 that filed his certified duplicate with us. And then Mr. F for the 11th District. Mr. Farmer filed for the 17th District. And Ms. McCash filed as a Democrat in the 17th District to run against Mr. Farmer. And then Frank Nicely, of course, filed his with us, took his up with us, and filed it, and then took his too. So he's filed also. So right now, these are our ballots. Now, that's not including the state and federal office. This is local only. And I just got this then Monday and didn't have a chance to get it to you guys for this meeting. But the list of state and federal candidates is also, for the primary, has also been decided by the state. And I do have that list. I just don't have it in your packet because I didn't have it when I sent these out. So we need to make a motion to... Uh, Certify the ballot candidates uh, locally and, and and statewide, too. They're going to be on there anyway, but locally we need to certify the ballot candidates for the August 6th election. Okay. I make most we certify and take our. 
Jack Kramer seconds it. All in favor, say aye. We better call the roll. Okay, oh, yeah. I forgot. I thought we did that first. Go ahead. That's okay. Uh, Commissioner Carr. Yes. Kramer. Yes. McCracken. Yes. Watkins. Yes. Okay, we got it now. Yeah, we've got Thank it. You. Okay. Let's go move on to the budget. I think, I think, I'm trying to remember back here, you probably have two budget copies there. I gave you one, I think, at the last meeting, preliminary, and then with this packet, I think, one page sheet. The, the only discrepancy we have on the budget right now is is I have three ninety six eight thirty four as the total budget. Okay, now that now remember this budget includes two election cycles and not just one like my budget from the prior year does. The only the only difference I'm finding when the finance department called me to tell me what the total budget amount was, she gave me a four hundred and five thousand dollar number and and it was a nine thousand dollar difference and, and I could not for the life of me figure out what I'd plugged in wrong. Well it wasn't me but the uh there's a there's an amount that they use for the retirement up here that runs about sixteen, seventeen thousand as you can see it's line item uh it's a uh, line item two oh four of that budget. You'll see it says 101, 51, 500, 204 state retirement. It's already 16.5 to 17.1, as you see. And I'm yeah. just, they gave me those numbers Langdon did from the finance department at 15,958. So that's what I plugged in. When she sent me the copy over, she has 24,000 something. So there's my $10,000 difference. I think I know that. Uh, and I think we're good with this amount. The only difference also is we're we're already having calls for absentee ballots. So I and the state wants us to anticipate a huge increase for August and November. So I was adding another five thousand dollars in postage in that line item, in addition to what I normally add for the two election cycle. I'm going. I've, I've requested an extra five grand to handle the absentee ballot request because. We send those things out there 65 cents a piece. And so we don't have any idea at this point because of what's going on with this virus as to how many we may or may not have. So it's an, if it's an edu uneducated guess is the best I can uh, it, come up with to figure out about how much postage we would spend. So out, but with, even with that included, we still are about 396, 834, according to that. What I want to do, though... Is 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 have a uh, since I I couldn't get a hold of Jesse this morning to discuss with her the difference of nine thousand in that one line item. Uh, what I'm going to do is request that we go ahead and take her figure of four hundred five, and assuming that the information she plugged in for state retirement is correct even though that's not what they gave me to plug in. Maybe it's changed. I don't know. So what I want to ask for is for us to go ahead and approve the budget based on a $405,000 figure instead of the three ninety six eight thirty four in case she protects. Okay? Does that make sense? Well, I have a, Charles, I have a couple of questions before we move on. Sure. Okay. Uh, I noticed Senator, let me get my line lined up. Okay. Under uh, Social Security, life insurance, and medical, uh, yeah. they're, they're all reduced. Yeah, I have no control of those, yeah. That's the figures that they gave me from the finance office. Oh, okay. And then, dues and membership, you increased that 500 yeah. Uh, wow. That's wow. Just in, that's just in anticipation of something that goes up based on this year. 
we don't know what's going to happen. And I'm just next year's budget. I'm just, I'm just. I'm just plugging a little bit there in case we have an increase in any kind of dealer membership based on our Takio dues and membership dues and anything to do with a seminar. Of course, now this year we didn't use the seminar money, which is good, but I, I don't retain any money. That's the thing. Even if we over budget, it all goes back into the general fund. But that's all that is. Well, listen, if, if they have. Uh, set forth and approved 396834. Tell me again why we want to increase it to 405. Okay. In the Just one more to go. Okay. In the state retirement item, which is the 204. Yeah. Okay. I want you to see that. When they sent the figures over, that 15,958, this is when Langman originally sent the projected budget totals. And that's not something I have control of. That they tell me right. right. I understand he, that. He has fifteen thousand nine fifty eight. Okay. So they plug all this into the computer and then they send it over to me and say, Hey, we're off about nine thousand dollars. And I said, Well, I've been through it twice. My figures haven't changed. And they said, Well, I don't know what it is. So I sent this same thing you're looking at over to them and she called me back and said I still don't see the issue. I said, well, I don't need it. Let me go through it again. Send me what you have. So she sent it over yesterday afternoon. And where I have 15958 which is what they gave me, they have put uh -huh. in 24000 and something. And that's the $9,000. So my adding 396834 see, I thought I misadded it and it because they kept telling me it was more than that. And I, so I added it three times. I said, no, that adds up correctly. The nine thousand difference is because they've got a twenty four thousand five hundred figure in that fine item that I have no control over. So I'm trying to just I, I don't want to have to come back to you for an extra nine thousand because the figures plugged in wrong. So if it's if we hit four oh five, if she's right and that figure is supposed to be twenty four and Langdon just missed it when he first sent it to me. Then I'll already have the four hundred five, and won't have to come back to y'all and say, "Okay, now we got to add that extra nine thousand. You know, you don't usually you don't usually see budgets decrease in terms of uh, medical stuff like that. You know, I know, and that's and that's why I'm so. And I tried to call her right before the meeting just to get a clarification, make sure she didn't just. And she could have put the number in wrong, Betty. Uh, yeah. Because she even said to me the other day when I talked, I could have plugged something in wrong. So that could have happened, and it could be wrong. But then we'd be back to the three ninety six eight thirty four, which is fine. But I don't want to take a chance on doing it because I know we're crunching budget time now with the county. Uh, but anyway, so okay. So, so we're going to vote on four oh five, knowing that it may reduce that's really right. by nine grand. That's correct. Yeah, and we'll come back and vote again, right? If we need to, that's correct. Yeah, okay. Okay? Okay, sounds good. Did I hear a roll call on the table? Yeah, take car, I vote yes. Motion. Motion. I make, make a motion. Jack Kramer seconds it. Now vote. Okay. Commissioner Carr. Vote yes. Commissioner Kramer. Yes. Commissioner McCracken. Yes. Commissioner Watkins. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, guys. I'll give it all in favor. Oh, you are done. Okay. All right. So we're moving. On. Got some the 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 seminar training. Obviously, we we're still not. When we first say what they're going to get yet about that, we know we're not going to have the seminar. Everybody knows we're not going to have the June seminar. But I just want to make sure everybody knew that. They've not given us the as to what exactly they're going to end up doing for that. We have 720 voter registrations since the last election. So we, we can't really do the quarterly deficiency report unless you all look at it. So we'll try to do that in the next meeting. Uh, we're still not open to the public to walk in the building, although our phone number's on the front, and we're fully staffed here at the election office uh, until 
the state or the county. Uh, Mark's kind of following the state guidelines with the governor to, as far as opening the pub. They can call the number on the door, and we can we can come in and decide whether or not we need to uh, have them come in or not. Our deadlines are all met. Uh, we've got all the information we need for the ballot, so we're kind of we're kind of in that mode uh, right now. And that'll continue as it is. Uh, we don't meet again technically on the on the schedules till June seventeenth. However, depending what happens with this virus and stuff, I'll probably may have I'll probably have to call another meeting probably in May. Okay. I don't know when it'll be at this point, but I, I don't want I don't think I'm gonna wait that long for us to get together and make sure that uh we all know what's going on and what we may have to do. Now, having said that I've been on two one-and-a-half-hour conference calls with the state regarding what may or may not happen in the August election. Uh, and it's been very, very trying because there's a lot of information that's been thrown out there. And it's something y'all, I really need you guys to talk about, uh, at, least, uh, at least to yourself, because you can't talk among each other unless you're in a meeting. Uh, without breaking the sunshine law. So what we want to do, I've got recruitment of poll workers on here, which is my number one main concern going forward, depending on what this virus does and how we can protect them. That's if I can get any of them to work and what we would actually do at polling places, during early voting, at the satellite office, and how we would handle the polls on election day as far as voter turnout, plus what you know what potentially could be a huge, huge increase in absentee voting. The state has been very specific in saying that they cannot now you gotta remember behind all of this, the General Assembly doesn't go back in session till June the first. And so all of this is just guidance that we're getting outside of of their review, but I've talked to the Secretary of State and Coordinator of Elections in this last call, and they they have told us that the governor has no power under executive order to create or change existing law. He only has the authority to postpone different things that are already in the law. For example, he could postpone an election date or something like that. But we know in Wisconsin, they were having their primary last Tuesday, and the governor had 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 issued an executive order for them to move their election to June because of the virus, and the Supreme Court reversed the decision the day before the election, and they had to call in, I can't remember the number, I think it was 20,000 National Guardsmen to run the election in Wisconsin. So even if, even if, and that set a precedent, at least some other states have moved elections and there's not been any pushback on it until Wisconsin. So we know even if something happens and something had to be pushed back, that wouldn't necessarily be the gospel uh, as far as us having to train and be able to recruit and do those things. So I want you guys to be really thinking about recruitment help uh, or whatever we can do in the event this virus is at the level it is when August gets here. Uh, I don't personally think it will be, but we don't know. Well, I mean, it should have run its course pretty much by then, but they're talking about second surges and second waves and all of this. So it's something we're going to have to deal with, and it doesn't appear from Trey Hargis' perspective that any law will be changed with maybe the exception of early voting hours and maybe the exception of um, – of, uh, relaxing the absentee ballot requirements as far as age or reason that you get an absentee ballot. He says outside of that, you're probably not going to have any legislative changes that can be done 
uh, like, for example, they can't change the election to an absentee ballot election only. But those kind of things, he said, you just can't do it in the time that we have to do it. So we're going to have to figure out how we're going to do it under the current guidelines and the current laws that are in place. So it's something to be thinking about. And there's a lot of, like I said on the paper, there's a lot of potential difficulties associated with that. Um, and, and I literally told the Secretary of State that I envisioned if we had a pandemic and I could get workers, which is my number one concern because it's hard enough to get workers anyway, was that I, I foresee walking into a polling place where everybody has a, a protective glass in front of them Everybody's got a mask on. Everybody's got a blue robe and blue gloves, like they're walking into a hospital. And I, and 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 he said, "Well, I don't see it that bad." And I said, "Well, I'm a 62, almost 62 year old heart patient with high blood pressure, and I'm in that risk group. And I I want to make sure that I'm protected also because I may not be able to afford to get this virus. So those are things that we need to really be thinking of, and that's why I'm going to want to come together before the June 17th meeting." and discuss what you guys think. I have written a, an outline, and I'm going to send it to you. I, I'm in the middle of it, but I'm almost finished with it. I've written an outline just, uh, kind of discussing the various aspects, absentee voting, election day, poll recruiting, early voting, satellite hours, and I'm going to send that to you guys to kind of give you the reviews of what we've discussed in the meetings at the state. So you'll have kind of a uh, one, two, three approach to, to what we may have to do in the cases because I want everybody to be really on board with it because it could really be troublesome, uh, especially if somebody gets exposed to the virus and knows they got exposed and it has to be quarantined. That changes being able to come into a particular room and all kinds of stuff. So it could really be a problem, okay? Uh, <laughs> Charles, uh, you aren't yes, the only right. one in, in that vulnerable group. We all are, by age. Yeah, That's a nail. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and and it's it's just it's scary. I mean, it really is. And so, uh, but but I want y'all to be thinking about it. And I like I said, I'll send you that outline. I'm gonna type it up so it'll be nice, clear, and concise, so you can see it. And that'll give you plenty of time to digest it and kind of make notes and that kind of thing too. Also. We have a, uh, I was contacted this morning, uh, got an email late yesterday afternoon that they have appointed a new election commission member. Uh, and the appointment letter went out yesterday. She has 20 days to return it, and that is Paula Gibson, Rugal Gibson. So uh, Judy Blackburn called me this morning to make sure that I knew that she had been sent an appointment letter. So she has until May the 4th to uh, return it. Of course, Judy's already talked to her, and she's agreed to do it, so there's no reason she would not return it. And then when she returns that by the, to the state and it's been accepted, then she would officially be an election commission member. And then I will call her and uh, follow, make sure she gets her certificate sent in in time, and then we'll make an announcement about that, provided she does do it. And then she would be included, and I'll get her a packet of information, and the state will send her a law book, and then I will send her a packet of information for her to study up on, and then we'll try to introduce her uh, at the next meeting. I think all of you all know her, correct? Yes. I don't. I don't think I know where she's from. <laughs> she's talking Pat Rugal's daughter from Jefferson City. She's married to Joe Gibson, Walmart manager. Manager yeah. <laughs> Walmart, Joe Gibson. No relation to me though. <laughs> but don't. But anyway, that's that's been done. So I was contacted. Like I said, Judy called me this morning. So. Uh, but she'll, she'll, uh, I, I think she'll do good. We'll just, we'll, uh, we'll do what we have to do and get her, um, uh, meshed into the meetings and get her started here as soon as we can. So I'll follow up on that. And that is all I have. Yeah. Oh, one other thing the the certifying of the ballot candidates, I'm going to make a document up that y'all will sign off on in our next meeting 
uh, attesting to the certification of these ballots. I'll do that document. I'm not going to send it around to you and have them mail it all over the place. I'll just uh, okay. wait for the next thing that we get together and y'all can sign. Now, the executive hey, order. Charles? Yes, sir. Hey, Charles. My yes, uh, electronic signatures uh, are uh, legal. Why don't you just uh, email us all a copy of what we have to sign, and we can sign it and send it back to you. It doesn't well, have I to I'd rather just wait and sign it when we come in. Well, it has to be if we come in. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, if, if if we're not going to meet, then then we'll 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 uh, we'll attack that. I think Jack at that point, and, and I don't care. Okay. I'll even uh, and I could do that, but but I think we'll be fine. And I'll tell you something else too. The executive order. And I think I gave you all a copy of it. I can't remember. The executive order that for the meetings to be able to be uh, uh, done like we're doing today by audio is in effect uh, till May 18th. Now, that doesn't mean that won't be extended, but at least till May 18th, we have the ability to do this. Uh, so I wouldn't have probably uh, addressed a meeting date until after that to see where he's going to go with that executive order, if he's going to extend it or what have you. But at this point, uh, it'll be probably after sometime after May 18th. It'll we'll be close there, too. Okay? And, but I'll go ahead and send out this other information to you so you can have time to kind of look it over. And, and, and feel free to call me if, if, if you've got questions or something either don't understand about the notes that I give you about what we're going to try to do. I've been pricing uh, masks and sanitation stuff and uh, the face shields that you wear, the pricing, all of that, trying to we're going to get that. I've ordered 2,500 more cards for the absentee voting and another 4,000 envelopes. The envelopes aren't here yet, but the cards just came yesterday. And so we're getting kind of ready just in case we have this huge, huge increase in this stuff. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. We're planning. But it's kind of planning of something we've never had happen before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, we don't have any Charles. We don't have any. Charles. I yeah. have hey, one Charles. question. Yeah, sure. Uh, who's who here? here? Then I have a question, too. Okay. Is Betty yeah. on now? Yes. Okay. Charles, I'm sorry, but I need to ask a question about travel on the budget. I overlooked that one. It increased 2000 yeah. Well, what, why did we do that for? Same reason. Just don't know what it's going to be. Don't know what's going to happen. Uh, don't know if, uh, if if things are going to go up, costs are going to go up, seminar costs come up, and that all comes out of that item. Uh, I've been told that, you know, we see, we canceled okay. all from this year. We I, Nobody's told us what we're going to do for 2021. So I'm just trying to be safe and Hey, hey. Now, sure. now this, budget, this budget is 2021, right? Yes. 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 Okay. July 1st. 2021, yeah. Okay. July 1 of 2020 to June 31st of 2021. You need to change your day, your time at the top, Charles. You got 2018, 2019. Well, so that's the that, that was just that's on. Right. That's right. Yeah, I see. I see you. I got you. Yeah, I could. I should have headlined that for you up there at the top to let you know. But yes, it's twenty twenty one, but twenty one. Got it. Hey, uh, Charles. I had one other thing. Uh, the certification of uh, uh, voter registrations that we have to do. Uh, yes, sir. Would it be possible for us to come in individually by appointment and look through those? Because they're, they're something that you can't copy and send out to us. Yeah, no. uh, I know. I don't know. I would be happy to come in and go through my however many we have to do and, and sign that I've done it. Uh, I, of, I just don't want to. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be, uh, you know, a bunch of us together. Well, it's got to be done. It only has to be done quarterly, Jack. And so, uh, and we've done the first quarter. 
and we've got through June to actually do it. You're only going to have to look at 10% of them. I think there was 15 to 20 as of yesterday. So 70 of them, each one of you will only have to look at about 15 of them to cover it. So shouldn't be too bad. However, I'll check and say I don't think that's necessary. Good. <laughs> That we give you a place to go. Pardon? Daddy, I said that we give you a place to go. I don't, I don't, <laughs> no, I, I, I'd rather put it off as long as we can, but I know. Well, we're not going to do it. I'm going to we'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I say Jack Kramer. Jack Kramer moves to adjourn. Okay, Clay Carr, second a motion. Time is 10.36, okay. baby. 10.36, okay. Mr. Carr. Yes. Kramer. Yes. McCracken. Yes. Watkins, yes. Yes, it's adjourned.